Welcome to Zolder in Belgium for Motor Racing's noisiest, newest and most novel championship. It's Super League Formula. 700 horsepower race cars flying the colours of some of the world's great football teams. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Marriott and with me to analyse the action is former Formula 3 champion Kelvin Bird. And we have a very wet track here. This will be the lineup. Race one coming up starting at 9 o'clock GMT at 15 minutes time. And at race two, tune in for that too at midday GMT. 18 cars, drivers from nine countries, and they're representing 13 different footballing nations. And a big surprise in qualifying because we've had two young bucks, two uh, young chargers, and there is one of them, Craig Golby, just uh, sheltering under the umbrella there. He's representing Anderlecht, the team are here, PSV Eindhoven. They have a lot of players here as well, and a lot of fans I've seen out. And uh, considering the weather conditions, we've got a very good crowd. We also have very bad weather conditions, uh, Kelvin. It's wet here and it's cold, and this could be difficult. Yeah, we've got a challenging race in prospect here. The drivers ran in dry conditions yesterday. OK, well, we know that these drivers can drive race cars, but how good are they at football? Let's find out and see who is best at Keepy Uppy. Hi, I'm Adrian Valles and I race for the Liverpool FC. Every kid around the school, you always play football, yeah. And at the beginning, football is the most important sport life for a kid because that's what you normally do on the on the playground at school. I'm Craig Dolby, I'm a driver for RSC Andalet. <laughs> my football background isn't that good, you know, I, I have a play around and, and my best friend plays professional football so I have a little kick around with him but to be honest I, I keep breaking ankles when I play football. Hello, I am Bastro Baguette. I drive for the first time here in Super League for Alain. I am interested in football, but I never played. I am really bad. And uh, my background in, in motorsport is uh, I did two years of two liter with a Spanish team, Epsilon, then two years in World Series. And this year I was driving in World Series with, uh, with Draco. Enrico Tocascello, I drive for S Row. Of course, when I was younger, like a kid, I was playing always with, uh, you know, with friends uh, when we were in the garden, uh, you know, close to my house. So we were always playing something like that. Always in the school during the, the break, we always go downstairs and play with, the, with the, you know, play soccer. Uh, pretty impressive there, Enrico. Let's check out the rules for this race, though. 44 minutes long plus one lap. There's going to be a rolling start, spray everywhere. Compulsory pit stop between lap eight and lap 20 before halfway. They'll change all four tyres. And here's one of the real innovative uh, parts of uh, Super League Formula. The results from race one, they're, they'll actually change their position. So the last guy will finish, uh, will start in first place. Interesting stuff. We've had races already at Donington Park. That's where it all started. As uh, we look down here on the FC Porto car, then we moved on and uh, had races at the Nürburgring. And currently, uh, it's the Beijing uh, team who uh, lead with uh, Davide uh, Rigon. So there we are on the grid. But let's check out that uh, story so far after two races. <laughs> Donington and the dawn of a new era in motor racing. And we are racing, away we go for the first ever Super League Formula. Look at Beijing, they are flying. Which wasn't the case for all concerned. The much fancy Milan quickly came to grief to the disgust of their driver, Robert Dornbos. Meanwhile, Liverpool were plowing through the field and would finish in fifth place. Liverpool looking for another place as we go into the foggy S's and he makes it nicely. But it was Beijing who took the chequered flag to the right of Davy Rigon. The round of second, the top of third. The second race saw an absolute downpour, much to the dismay of Al Ayin. Oh, and a big off there. And Borussia Dortmund quickly followed suit. No, no, Dortmund it. But he didn't have his dance. 
fighting shoes on. Here we go. Oh, this is a run for the lead. Borja Garcia and Samir take the lead from Flamenco in brilliant fashion. And Sevilla went on to win the race with Flamengo second and Liverpool third. On to Germany and on board with AC Milan at the Nürburgring. A fortnight ago, it was a flawless performance from Robert Dornbos as he led from pole to podium. Great Dolby secured a superb second place for RSC Anderlecht. And Alessandro Pierguini, Galatasaray, in his third. Victory for AC Milan, considering that meant starting the back of the grid in race two. An almost equally impressive display as Dornbos came through the field to finish sixth. However, went to the over Berman from PSG Eindhoven. Craig Dolby swept to a magnificent second place for Anderlecht, and by finishing third, David Rigon ensured that Beijing maintained their overall lead in the championship. So, after two of the six races, Beijing lead with 151. PSV Eindhoven have 127, Sofia 120, but it's all to play for. Coming up here at Zolder. Qualifying yesterday in the dry, there's the car which uh, currently heads the uh, championship. That's Davide Rigon from Italy. Quite a lot of single-seater and sports car experience from him. And then the uh, FC Basel car is being driven by one of the youngsters in the race. In fact, uh, he's the teenager, the 18. Let's find out a little bit more about Max Vassell. He's the baby of the grid, fresh-faced and full of potential after four years honing his skills in Formula BMW and Formula Renault. You might think Max Vassell was born to race, but it wasn't always that way. At the beginning, my, my parents uh, buy me a car, uh, card, and then at the beginning, okay, I don't like it, but then it was more and more, and now I love it, so it's my life, and it's perfect. I go always to the uh, driver searching program from BMW, so they make always uh, a searching program in Valencia, and uh, a lot of young drivers come there to test the cars, uh, and uh, this was the first time that I saw him on the track, and it was so impressive to see him, uh, that I know at this moment uh, that he has a big talent to drive racing cars. It's a close relationship between Vassell and his team. There's a mutual trust and respect. But it was still a surprise when the 18-year-old was told he'd be making the big jump to Super League Formula. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. For me it was a dream and now it's reality. Uh, yeah, it was, was nice, it was incredible. Motorsport is always a little bit risk and uh, in this case I know exactly that it was uh, a big risk uh, to jump up from a 200 horsepower car to a 750 horsepower car but I know Max now uh, signs four years and I know that he has so big talent that he can do it. Now for me it's more, uh, it's feel more comfortable than at the beginning. I feel better in the car, I have, I have more feeling for the car and now it's like the same for me with BMW, so I can, I can control the car and now it's fine. But the beginning was really hard. It's been a steep learning curve for the young German, but you could see signs in the last round that he belongs. I know the track in Nürburgring was the biggest, uh, was the biggest point for me. And so we learn more from the car and so from my side I learn more. Okay, I'm 18 years old, I'm the youngest, but from my team there's no pressure, from Super League there's no pressure, so everything is fine. Big chance for the young man, the 18-year-old, and there he is on row five of the grid. He's going to be right in the middle of that ball of spray coming up here. Well, no spray, as we said yesterday, because qualifying was held in sunny conditions. And uh, we had this new knockout system. We looked at the, uh, the, door of the uh, Borussia car there, and uh, that's a big story because this is the man who is on pole position, a newcomer to this. But we can find out how it all works in this new knockout qualifier. It was sensational. So here's the quarterfinal lineup Atletico Madrid face Borussia Dortmund. Adelaide take on Milan. Porto go head to head with Liverpool. And Beijing clash with Sevilla. So first up, Andy Suchek of Madrid battled it out with Dortmund's Paul Meyer. And although Suchek was fast enough to frighten the birds, it was Meyer qualified for the first semi-final, to the delight of his team. Next up, fresh from watching his football team in action, 
and let's Craig Dolby. And he was too fast for Milan's Robert Dornbosch. Finished almost a second behind. The third quarter final was between Liverpool and FC Porto's Tristan Gomendi. Adrian Ballas triumph for the Merseyside outfit, comfortably beating the Portuguese side. The last of the quarterfinals saw Beijing up against Sevilla. And David Rigon was unable to match the pace of Borja Garcia. And that left the semi-final lineup looking like this. Adelaide versus Liverpool and Borussia Dortmund against Seville. And from the outset, in semi-final one, Anderlecht outpaced Liverpool's Adrian Ballas. And it's Craig Dolby by almost two seconds who booked his place in the race for pole position. In the second semi, Paul Meyer, the sub for Borussia Dortmund, faced Sevilla's Borja Garcia. Despite the Spaniards' best efforts, he was unable to match the raw pace of youngster Meyer. And 18 clubs have been whittled down to just two. Craig Dolby of Anderlecht would meet Borussia Dortmund's Paul Meyer. Perhaps it was the excitement of seeing his team win the previous night, but young Craig pushed just too hard in his desperation for pole and paid the price. Afterwards, Craig admitted he'd been trying just too hard. His mistake handed today's place at the front of the grid to Dortmund's Meyer. So here's how they line up for race one at Zolder. So it's a surprise first pole for Borussia Dortmund, Paul Meyer. Alongside him, RS Anderlecht, the local team, Craig Dolby. Then it's Liverpool FC, Adrian Ballas and Sevilla with Borja Garcia. Then the championship leader, David Rigon for Beijing Guan. Then FC Porto, Christian Gomendi of Paris. Behind him, the experienced Robert Dornbos for AC Milan and Atletico Madrid, the Spaniard Andy Suchek. Then for Tottenham Hotspur, Duncan Tappy and the youngster from Germany driving for FC Basel. Behind them Galatasaray and Rangers, yes, the pride of Glasgow. 13th and 14th on the grid. Tucker Rocker for Flamengo and for AS Roma, Toccacello. Next row of the grid. Going towards the back now, Corinthians, Antonio Pizzonia, who's raced in 20 Grand Prix, and for Olympiakos, Kasper Andersen of Denmark. And on the back row of the grid, for Alain Bertram Baguette, and alongside him, Yelma Berman for PSV Eindhoven. And there is that grid, you can see the wet track, and uh, this is going to cause the drivers plenty of problems, uh, Calvin Burt, and we can look down the grid and see all 18 cars, I think, are in position. Yeah, they'll all be starting on wets. Now, what's interesting is it's been wet all morning, but it's not actually raining, and it hasn't rained for 10 or 15 minutes. Remember, they've got to do a compulsory pit stop during the race, so the gamble will be, do they go to slicks, don't they go to slicks? We're looking at Craig Dolby there, front row starter, 20-year-old English driver in the Anderlecht car, obviously a local team also, so uh, he'll be hoping for a great day. Yeah, all the uh, players for that uh, team are here. There's uh, Liverpool FC. Duncan Tappy will be the driver of uh, that car. Sorry, Adrian Valley's the driver of that car. Duncan Tappy from England driving for Spurs. And uh, just talk to me a little bit about the visors, because all this spray, they do do preparation on the visors. Yeah, obviously, you, um, you're breathing heavy. It's a stressful situation. You sweat a lot. You're working hard. So you create steam inside the helmet. And when, when it's cold and wet on the outside, the, the visor can fog up. But there are treatments. There's, there's solutions you can put on the inside to help that. Now, and, there, there is the car which leads the ta championship. So he's got a bit of work to do. Davy Day, that's how apparently we pronounce it. And uh, Davy Day, Rigon. Interested to see how he comes through the field. We've had four races and we've had four different winners, and only two people have stood on the podium twice. So, uh, we've had all sorts of uh, interesting scenarios here. Obviously, Robert Dornbus, very experienced, coming out of Champ Car, raced here in Champ Car last year. He knows the track. But we have to say, looking through the grid here, some very big surprises. This young kid, Paul Meyer, we'd hardly heard of him. Actually, he's been racing for five seasons or so in single-seaters, had a bit of problem with finance, as some young guys do. So, be interested to see how he gets on. A lot of pressure on a young man who's never raced a car with this horsepower before. And before this, any car he'd driven only had uh, about a quarter of the horsepower. It's going to be tricky for him. 
Sure, yeah, he's front row grid, Paul Meyer. It's fairly local, he's, although he's a Dutchman, we're not actually far from Holland where we're sat as we look at Andy Suchek there. He was uh, very quick in qualifying, yeah, but just was, didn't yeah. get it together in the knockout section. Yeah. See the big uh, groove tyres there? There's the uh, Tottenham Hotspur Day team, of course, have had a terrible season thus far in uh, the Premiership. Duncan Tappy, very promising young British driver, had a bit of a bitty season, uh, didn't have a full ride this year, but has been actually racing in a World Series by Renault. A, a series somewhat similar to this, but only done a couple of races and shown some speed. I, I think Tappy's got a big future. And then uh, looking here at that young man we just met uh, on tape a little moment ago, Max Russell, young German, only 18 years old. And uh, he'll have hard work to do. Uh, we've got uh, behind that the Galatasaray car, and uh, out in the uh, paddock earlier, I saw several Galatasaray fans jumping up and down and singing for us and, and doing their chant. Obviously, the team from uh, Istanbul in Turkey and their fans are very passionate indeed, and uh, they like motor racing. Of course, there's a big Grand Prix track uh, just outside Istanbul. Fantastic race circuit. Yeah, well, we're a long way from Turkey, so I don't know where those guys <laughs> came from, but here's the race. Rangers car, driven by the Scotsman Ryan Dale, who originates from Glasgow, so that's quite nice. Yeah. He's starting about three quarters of the way down the grid. He's one of three or four guys who have been racing in America yeah. in the past and last year's Champ Car Series, so uh, he should be used to cars like this, and actually the same chassis manufacturer, so there'll be yeah. some family resemblance in the cars. Just talk a little bit, if you will, Kelvin, about these cars, because uh, on these, I mean, we've, got, we've got V12 engines, 700 horsepower, and these are real muscular race cars. They're proper big purpose-built cars. As you say, it's, it's a 12-cylinder 4.2 V12. They sound fantastic. The engine is purpose-built for this formula, and the cars are all the same. They're built by the same manufacturer, so um, the difference in the cars is down to the drivers and the teams and how they set the car. We look at uh, this guy. Tocicello, we'd expect him to come through the field. Very experienced driver, representing Roma and uh, yeah, he's 29 years old and a lot of racing he's again starting three quarters of the way down the grid but I'll be looking for him to come through Another yeah. he was very unlucky in, uh, in the Nürburgring he was leading the race with three laps to go now here's the most experienced man on the field yeah. Antonio Pizzoni had driven in 20 Grand Prix but uh, this past season have been racing uh, stock cars or saloon cars in Brazil and maybe it's just having a problem getting his head back into single seaters Raced, uh, of course, for Williams. I mean, he's raced for top teams, this man. That's and there is uh, Kasper Andersen, the young uh, Dane from Silkeborg yeah, in Denmark, in the Olympiakos uh, car from uh, Greece. And then we go right to the back row now. And on the back row of the grid is a man who uh, actually has already won in this uh, series. Not This is Bertram Baguette. He's a late uh, change in the uh, Al Ain car. That's the, the team from the UAE, from uh, Dubai. Baguette, uh, a local driver from Belgium, who would expect to go quite well, but had very little time in the car. And then uh, the last car on the grid, has got a lot of fans cheering for it, the PSV Eindhoven car, Yelma Berman. And uh, Yelma, you know him well, and he yep. should come through the field. I'll be exactly that, Andrew. I'll be looking for him to charge through. He's a race winner already. We've only had four race winners, and Yelma's a local driver, knows this track very well. I'll be looking for him to go forward. I don't quite know what his problem was yesterday, but uh, well, I understand that car. Yeah, I understand. I had some problem with the front suspension. Yeah. So here are the cars firing up now. Phenomenal roar of these uh, V12 engines, normally aspirated. These cars do not have too many uh, computer aids on, and they don't have traction control. Uh, they do have a sequential gear shift with the paddle, so uh, really just to don't you know, use the clutch, do you? Except for the start. Uh, Did we check out? They got, I think they've probably got a hand clutch for the start. That's yeah, I think they have to, but the sequential, uh, the electronic sequential gearbox is helpful in the wet because uh, you get a very coordinated smooth change, which will cut out the wheel spin and the traction problems. Having said that, they've got 700 horsepower, so they are going to get wheel spin and they are going to get traction problems. So. We'll see some drama. Uh, I think most of the drama we're likely to see is in the entry yeah. to the corners under braking. Now, the pit window is between 8 and 20 laps. We're not quite sure how many laps this race will be because it's a time race of 44 minutes. This is the warm-up lap, green flag waves. This uh, formula has been four or five years in its gestation period. 
and the uh, team behind it worked so hard to make this all happen and they've done an absolutely phenomenal job with this. Great cars, a nice lineup of drivers, some of the best football squads, football teams represented in the world. And there you can see already that spray coming up. Now it's going to be two warm-up laps because of the yeah. wet, so they'll come round a second time under the pace car and then at the end of that second lap you'll see that pace car peel off and then uh, the whole hell will break out, I suspect. And Zolder as well known, the first corner of Zolder after start is slightly downhill and uh, we have seen a lot of accidents in that uh, corner on the first lap in the past, although, uh, Calvin, you went down there and had a look and they have altered it uh, since uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, they have. There's a big, ru bigger runoff area, but it, having said that, it's a very tight corner that tightens up a bit on the exit and obviously it's first corner, they're young drivers, especially the front row of the grid. Yeah. So much, They're so much pressure on, on those two young yeah. boys at the front. Uh, both of them somewhat parallel careers, and both very little known, really. Craig Gold has done most of his racing over here in Belgium, although he has had one season in the UK that didn't work out very well for him. And uh, young Craig Dolby is the youngest Briton ever to win a single feature race, because over here uh, you can race at 15 in the uh, Renault Series in the Belgian Championship. He did just that and won a race, his first ever race. After a good karting career, he won it here, and I think he was uh, 15 years and just a handful of days old. Paul Meyer, similar career, raced a lot in Formula Renault, did a season in the German uh, Formula 3 Championship, didn't have too much success there. This season, Paul Meyer, the man on pole position, has been racing, uh, joined actually later in the year, not at the start of the season, and with his own family run team, has won one race in the big Formula Renault Europe Series, the two litre cars, and lies 10th in the championship. But those cars are you know, quarter of the horsepower, yeah. it's a whole different deal. And behind these drivers with champ car experience with Formula One experience and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see if these young guys can keep their head. Look at that spray. Keep it together, that's a great indication of how little they're going to be able to see and remember they're going at less than half racing speed here as they start their second run and this is the start of the race. And look at that uh, big stream of water yeah. across the track there. I think uh, any suggestion that this is going to dry up uh, in the pit window time is uh, a little bit optimistic. Probably, yeah. yeah. It's still not raining, but it's just so much moisture here that uh, whether 8 to 20 laps will be enough to create a dry slot. That's what the drivers will be looking for, is the beginning of a dry groove to, to know whether they can gamble on slicks. Slick tyres are so much quicker than wet tyres, but obviously you need at least some dry tarmac for them to work. Slick, you can't put slicks on in these conditions. All these cars then in the colours of some of the world's greatest football teams. Many of the drivers also have the colours of the teams on their crash helmets as well. And uh, great professionalism in this championship. Everything in the paddock is absolutely in tip-top shape. Uh, the race actually being run by a number of British officials. It's a British organising uh, team as far as the actual race is concerned here from the uh, British Automobile Racing Club. So we know that uh, we're in good hands here and just the closing uh, seconds as they come round on this second uh, sighting lap to uh, check out the conditions, and they will be looking to see where the puddles are. Yeah, we haven't seen too much standing water. There, no. there is a river um, down the hill. I think we spotted it after the uh, after the Villeneuve chicane. There's quite a lot of water on the road there, and they'll be looking. It's quite wet on the inside there, so uh, they'll be cautious about diving up the inside there on the brakes. But yeah. they're picking out the places where they can possibly overtake in these opening laps. You know, when everyone's bunched up together, there's a lot of opportunities. It's also quite risky, but there are more opportunities in the beginning of the race to steal a few places. You mentioned there uh, Gilles Villeneuve, the Villeneuve corner. He was, of course, notoriously killed here during the Belgian Grand Prix. This sold a track here, and we're quite close to Brussels and near the town of Hasselt. Uh, saw a number of Grand Prix for eight or nine years here, back in the late 70s and early 80s. And had the winners like Mario Andretti and John Watson won here as well. Well, we're coming up now. We'll watch for that pace car. The uh, light is out and we expect that it will peel off and then uh, we could have some major action coming up. So the front row, the two young lads at the front will be controlling the pace. We should see the safety car go straight on here, um, but the race won't start. They've got one more corner to do and uh, then it'll be the lead up there to the start. There it goes. There it goes.
and at Dortmund, the yellow car there, and elect the local Belgian team, fans from all over Belgium here supporting that purple and silver car. There are the lights, they will just go out, they're racing already, and off they go down into that first left-hander. And Paul Meyer is in the lead. Paul Meyer in the lead as everybody else is going to come through. Meyer goes out wide and Dolby's challenging. Dolby goes through. Meanwhile, the Beijing car goes off and uh, also we've got the number three machine off. That's the AC Milan car and I think that's got damage to the front. Beijing car's lost its rear wing, so there's been an impact somewhere. That's the championship leading Beijing car is there without rear wing. And the AC Milan car off as well. Look at the spray. Well, just tell us what happened here. There's the green Beijing car, I see re without rear wing. Someone's gone into the back of him, and yeah, Dornbos without front wing. So uh, make your own conclusion. We didn't see it, but you can have a guess what happened there. Robert Dornbos, all that experience. IndyCar Rookie of the Year, finished third in the IndyCar Championship last year. It appears he made a mistake. But meanwhile, Craig Dolby, look at the, not much traction there. The car's tiptoeing through that corner. See the water on our lenses there. And uh, Craig Dolby... This uh, young man from uh, Leicester, from the uh, town of Melton Mowbray, with uh, pressure on him from Paul Meyer, but he got the uh, better run down into that first corner. But I get the feeling that they are starting to put away from the rest of the field a little bit. Yeah, we've got Liverpool in third. Liverpool, uh, yeah. He's uh, being careful at the start of this race. So Dolby and Meyer, great start from the two young lads. PSV Eindhoven still at the back of the field. We might see uh, Jarno Dorman uh, move up a little bit. Sevilla, we've got him fourth, he's looking quick. Come, suddenly Dolby's pulled out, second or two, just yeah. in the last couple of corners. And probably had a big slide from uh, Paul Meyer yeah. for uh, the Borussia car. Two second lead for Eindhoven. Seville in fourth, he's looking strong, he's all over the back of the Liverpool car. If you just watch the back of the picture here, they're close together, we didn't quite catch them. And we've got uh, some superb timing here, showing us the different sector times. The track split into three sectors, and uh, we can read uh, exactly what the uh, situation is. A third, two thirds, and all the way around the lap. And it looks at the moment as if uh, the Dortmund car is uh, answering back a little bit. Seville in uh, fourth place, and then uh, Porto fifth, Atletico in uh, sixth place. A lot of spray here, they're being very careful. And, and pit stop with a puncture, puncture, he's got yeah. a puncture. That's uh, Duncan Tappy. And there you see the tyre. Don't know if he collected something, but, uh, well, that's going to hurt Duncan Tappy. And that pit stop, of course, is out the window, and that yeah. won't get, so he'll have to make another one. Yeah, he'll have to stop again, so uh, that's a big problem for him. And uh, he's not coming in very quickly. I suspect no. he's not in a rush to get back out either. I'm probably a bit afraid of that locking up. Sometimes when you've got a puncture like that, you can slide yeah. into the pits and uh, give your mechanics a bit of a scare. But, uh, well, this young man, Craig Darby, done most of his racing in Belgium. A lot of it here. He does know this circuit yes. very well. He's yeah. raced here in the way. He'll know where any puddles are. Yeah. But Paul Meyer keeping up. And uh, Paul Meyer, until Saturday morning, had never driven one of these cars. The yellow flag still waving. I think we've still got uh, cars in the gravel there. Of course, that yellow flag means no overtaking. Really, really impressive, these two young lads. But the Liverpool car in third looks closer to me. I think they're starting to close yeah, down. If you look in the back of the screen here, the red car. That's Adrian Vallis, yeah. one of uh, three highly talented Spanish drivers on the uh, grid today. And you see that Bit car sliding is right on the limit. Both of them, look how wet it is there. Yeah. Interesting, Dolby crashed there in qualifying. He well. did. It's the same corner where he spun, so uh, he's obviously got a couple of problems with that. Now, the Liverpool car has halved, in, in my book, has halved the gap, yeah. so he's, he's looking quick and closing them down. So, some uh, excellent early action here with the two youngsters out in front. And I spoke with Craig Dolby yesterday after qualifying. He said, this is absolutely fantastic. He's had a bit of a struggle in his motor racing career to find money. Yeah. And he said, I just want to go out there and enjoy myself. And uh, that's what he's doing. <laughs> but it's, it's a strange form of enjoyment, I think. The concentration in his eyes will be bulging out. Quite a tall young man, long-headed. And as you uh, heard, he's got um, some football in his blood. And his best friend is a professional footballer. Well, 
he's certainly looking confident, and both of these two leaders well, are looking confident. Little down the uh, wet pit lane. But they do seem to be closing up a yeah. little bit of the uh, fourth car, the Seville car. Third and fourth on the move. Uh, another one I've spotted moving up is the AS Roma, uh, Enrico Tocicello, very experienced yeah. driver. He didn't qualify very well, but he's up to sixth and moving forward. Uh, Eindhoven up to uh, 14th. The uh, Alain car is, uh, has moved up to 15th. That's Bertrand Baguette, and uh, look at that on board shot. Oh, that's a... The driver gets a slightly better view than that. Ever so slightly better, yeah, yeah. but uh, that's the job you're up against. And the difficult thing is to see, uh, if, if it gets wet, it's difficult to see where the puddles are on the road with all that spray. You, you can just about guess where the back of the car is that you're following, because they've got a red light on. Yeah. But it's quite... And he's, and he's spinning. Oh, he's going to hit the barrier. Oh, and that's bang. a Sevilla car. Well, I think we might have... Uh, the safety car come out, and uh, car number 15 under investigation, we understand. That might have been for overtaking under the yellow flag, and that's Andy Suchek driving for Atletico Madrid. There's a replay of the spin, Sevilla. And Garcia just pushing too hard. Another man with a lot of experience in GP2, and indeed in World Series by Renault. Garcia, another man that came out of karting. Still sits there, but I suspect there's too much damage, Calvin, to uh, continue. No, he can't continue, no. That's just powering out of turn yeah, three onto just... the back straight, and he's jumping out now. Oh, the... I, I think I just saw yeah, the second-place car going off. Shooting straight Maya on. Maya going straight on. Yeah, I think you're right. Conditions are absolutely appalling here. He's rejoined. He's still running, but he did overshoot. There's yeah. Maya in the background, but he did overshoot, as you said, Andrew. Uh, uh, safety, safety car, car. Yeah. and that will of course bring everybody uh, under control. Yes, and uh, concertina it up together. So well, that is un here is the safety car, and um, he hasn't picked up the leader. No, he's not he picked up the leader. Up they've got Lex, the purple car. They've got to shuffle that around. Right. So what they'll do now? They'll gather everyone up behind that car, and then they will let them through slowly, one by one. So yeah, and then the leader must be positioned behind the safety car. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, young Paul Meyer counts himself lucky, yeah, I think, very. because he had that spin. He dropped back, and of course, any time he lost will uh, be recovered. Yeah, really plus some extra time as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's locked uh, the left front wheel. You can see stationary and. Uh, <laughs> Luckily for yeah. him, it wasn't gravel trap, there was a runoff area, so uh, he just lost four or five seconds, which he will now regain under the safety car. So, lucky boy. So, it would be interesting to see how they managed to uh, juggle everybody into the right positions. And uh, he's still going pretty quickly out there. Yeah, remember, he's these three cars oh, yeah, weren't picked they, up, so they they've, have... they've got an open lap to yeah. make up all the way back yeah. around to, the, to this queue, and they'll rejoin the back of the queue, and then... The safety car driver should, should allow these cars through one by one until he picks up the leader, yeah. uh, Craig Dolby. So, the left uh, car. Behind that uh, pace car at the moment is the man in third place, Adrian Valles. And behind that, Atletico Madrid, and then uh, Roma, Basel, Porto, uh, a whole raft of famous football teams. Just uh, trying to check out the uh, progress of uh, Antonio Pizzonia, the man with all that Formula One experience, champ car experience too, in the number 14 car. And he'd moved up to 10th place actually, so he'd be yeah. making some good progress. He's done okay, but the big mover is the Roma car. Tocicello started this race 14th and he's fifth already. Yeah. And well, he's also now in touch, he'll be in touch with the leaders because of the safety car. So keep your eye on that one when we restart. Tocicello, what, uh, how is his lap time there? He was, uh, yeah, quite a bit uh, quicker than the people around him. Yeah, 39 for about the third, third quickest lap. And uh, this track, uh, Carl, it seems to be about uh, 20 seconds slower than it was in the dry. This just shows the conditions. There's a flatbed truck going out to pick up a uh, car that's uh, beached and uh, obviously with a lot of damage to it. That's Robert Dornboss. Dornboss already a winner in this, but we didn't see exactly how that incident occurred, but uh, it would appear that he uh, rear-ended somebody. Yeah, I'm off the start, and uh, he, he seemed to hit the back of the Beijing car of Regon. These are the first three cars still just making yeah. their way slowly round to catch the queue, and within a lap or two, they'll be allowed through, so that the, the order will be reshuffled. There's the Sevilla car being picked up. 
So Borja Garcia just uh, losing it, aquaplaning off. 700 odd horsepower from the uh, Menard developed engine developed up in uh, the Cotswolds in uh, England, but the chassis built uh, out in uh, Brazelton in uh, Georgia, uh, right by the uh, Road Atlanta circuit where they had a big race at Petit Le Mans uh, yesterday. But uh, this will take two or three more minutes, I would think, to uh, sort out. And uh, of course, the clock continues to tick. Yeah. Uh, just uh, 33 minutes remaining. Um, unlike football, there's no injury time, <laughs> as it were. They may, they may start adding um, or reducing the race length if this, if yeah, this just safety car period lasts too long. But yeah. um, it shouldn't take too long to pick that car up. What, what may take longer is to reshuffle the pack and get those yeah. three cars all the way through. If they still haven't caught, you see they're two or yeah. three corners behind the pack. That's the first corner, and uh, the pack have just left the third corner. So they've got a bit more catching up to do, and then they'll reshuffle the whole pack. Let's talk a little bit about the pit stops they're going to make. Some of these drivers haven't made many because they no. don't normally drive in long races with pit yeah, stops, and that's right. a bit of an art as well, stopping absolutely on your mark. Obviously, the crew's got to be good changing these... Yeah. Wheels. Uh, we understand the rules say so you have to don't put any fuel in, but change all four wheels. Yeah. Now there is a series uh, in Germany, touring cars, DTM, and they can do it in three seconds. Yeah, and they put a little bit of fuel in as well. So it's absolutely amazing to see that. Yeah. They do. They are actually quicker than Formula One cars uh, at the pit stops. Now the, the challenge for the driver with pit stop is your in lap. That's the yeah. lap, the final racing lap into the pits, and your first out lap on cold yeah. tyres has got to be as effective as possible so you have to go 100 percent into the pits yeah break obviously the speed limit they're all doing the same speed yeah. in the pits and then when you get out you've got to go up straight up to 100 uh, percent yeah it's an easy way to gain free time and also to lose time if you're too cautious looks as if they sorted this out now uh, Calvin. yeah so the, the car has the leader yeah One, two, and three. second place yeah and the rest of the pack will make its way around catch up on the back of the queue you can hear the cars going past us at full speed in front of the pits and they they'll rejoin the back of the queue behind the third place liverpool car craig dolby went to the match on friday night and elect uh, playing they uh, did actually win that game and uh, was allowed on the pitch he actually uh, started the game by kicking the ball it was allowed that in the premiership and uh, he passed it to some young sort of eight-year-old kid and then uh, he passed it back to one of the players and the game started <laughs> Great promotion. Good touch, yeah, I'd, I'd quite like to do that. And, and what did he do? He had to run off the oh, pitch. So he ran off, yeah. He could, yeah. yeah. There they are, still coming through. We we'll still see that safety car board out, the uh, yellow flag. And uh, now we're down to uh, 30 minutes. And, of course, we've just... Uh, we've actually had, in the book, seven laps, but uh, quite a few of those have been under this pace car. The, uh, they've still got about half a lap of catching up to do the pack to this uh, to this pack of three. Can you keep the temperature up in the tyres with this? Uh, Difficult. They're not trying very hard. You can, but you'd have to weave a lot more than these guys are doing. It's it's very slippery. I'd be surprised if there's uh, it's very wet. I'd be surprised if there's much temperature. The tyres do wet tyres are softer rubber than dry tyres, so they do generate heat even in these conditions. But you need to work them really hard. Everyone on the same Michelin tyre. Yeah and they only have Michelin wets or Michelin dries. There's no inters. That's right. Some forms of racing, they have a sort of intermediate cut slick. They don't have that here, so it's, uh, it's either one thing or the other. Obviously, Michelin, with a huge history in motorsport, uh, provided the tyres for Grand Prix for many years. Uh, top tyre in sports car racing and the French company, huge commitment to motor racing, and uh, nice to see them here. Still poor visibility, a lot of spray. And uh, the challenge for these drivers is, obviously, they've, yeah, been so they've been bottled up for four or five laps. They're going to be eager to get going. Once they're released to restart, it's a balancing act. They want to push, but don't push too hard, and hopefully we won't see too much drama on the restart. Eindhoven fans there saw quite a lot out in the paddock earlier on. Just coming across the border, of course, from Holland, the team that's uh, backed by Philips, PSV, Philips... Uh, and the weather, the weather has got worse. It's it has, hasn't it? It's raining yeah. heavy and out, so well, uh, more challenge for them. More challenge. Disappointing in a way, because you have to say in the dry yesterday, these cars did look very yeah. impressive. Yeah. Well, and there's a bit of a gap there between those uh, first three. Yeah, they need to 
be very close on the restart. It's a, dry, it's a mistake I often see with younger drivers on the safety car restarts because you're giving time away. And, and the mentality is they try and they try and hang back and be cute and get yeah. a run through the last corner. But what happens? It, the guy in front, as soon as he goes, you're done. You've, yeah. you, you've made a gap and you'll never re remake it. So you must stay really close for the restart. The American drivers are very good at it because they have a lot more safety car action yeah. in American racing. So they're usually really cute at it. And we're still waiting for the pack. It should be some time during this lap that they, that the pack, we should see in the distance. There they are, yeah. Yep. So hopefully we'll restart at the end of this lap. And we'll watch for that pace car, whether the light goes out. And after that, it's going to be slippy slidey again, isn't Very, it? It's yeah. going, to, it's going to be dangerous Dan stuff out here. It'll be a lot of spray. And uh, Craig, Craig Dobby will be in a great position, the Anderlecht car. Now, is this a spin oh, on yep. the safety car yet? Yeah, the Al Ain car, I get spins under the safety car. A lot of interest in this uh, championship out in the uh, Middle East, a very much an emergent uh, marketplace for motorsport with the new circuits appearing to open every year. You know, tracks out uh, in uh, Qatar, in Dubai. We've got uh, tracks, of course, in, uh, being built in Abu Dhabi. And, of course, we've got the Bahrain track as well. And uh, also uh, football uh, making... Uh, a lot of news out in the Middle East as well, and Alain, they're one of the best teams out of uh, Dubai. And uh, that country, of course, also has had a lot of uh, rallying in the past, but now motor racing really started. Cars to coming over. in. Yep, race control message. You see him switch the lights out. That's the indicator to the drivers following that he will stop at the end of this lap when they turn out the flashing lights. And I've just seen also the Tottenham car drive past. Uh, we saw him do a very slow pit stop with a puncture. He has actually rejoined. Yep. He's, he's in one last lap place. behind, we yeah. believe. And remember, he's got one more pit stop to do as well, uh, the mandatory one, because the first stop wasn't his mandatory one. So, how do you work out this pit stop situation now? Obviously, uh, we are now in the window. Well, I would stop now. And the reason is because it's going to take three or four laps for these drivers to get a feel for the new conditions and get up to speed. Therefore, if you stop now, you'll lose less time. And will, it, will you be able to put hotter tyres on as well? Hotter. Uh, well, you'll, fit re you'll refit wets. I don't know if they're allowed to pre-warm the tyres. It wouldn't be ideal to put cold tyres on, but it's the same rule for everyone. I don't know if they can be warm. There's the man you were talking about, yeah. Topic Cello. Around that one, I think. Done a lot of racing in that uh, A1 series. Driven cars similar to this, probably not quite as powerful actually. And uh, he's a man with a lot of experience. Very unlucky not to uh, win that race in the Nurburgring. So the cars pulled off. They're now rounding the final corner, and already the scap. The two or three of them are pitted, as I suggested, which I think is the right time to stop. Pressure, pressure, pressure on Craig Dolby, and off he goes. Meyer right behind him. And there he is in that first corner, and then leading to what is known as the canal turn. And behind there is a huge, great shipping canal. And the car was twitching there on the uh, standing water. But it's Dolby is hanging on for all he is worth. And he's got Meyer right behind him, and already dropped the cars behind them. A lot so, of spray there. A lot of spray. These two youngsters putting on a magnificent performance. They are really making their name in motor racing through Super League Formula. They're doing a great job. And we've got green flags, which means go racing. We've got in third place the Madrid car. So the two that dived in the pits were Liverpool and Roma, I think, at the end of that lap. Yeah. Well, we've got quite a few, I think, towards the back of the Olympic car, Olympiacos car. Yeah, there's it's not gone in, but Porto has. Galatasaray has been in. Eindhoven has. That's a, another one to watch. So bear in mind, these two, um, these three has, are oh. yet to stop, and uh, look how slippery it is as to put the power down. These are very slow corners, so they'll be in second gear. They may even be in first gear in the wet because the speed is so low, so they're trying to put a lot of power down and uh, a lot of wheel spin, no traction control, so they're, they're battling with that. And Meyer's staying in touch here with Dolby. Borussia Dortmund, yellow car, and he can't break away. Notice he's not touching the curbs, which he would do in the drive. Yeah. Curves are painted, so there's much less grip uh, when it's wet. You, you need to avoid them. We've got a replay here of uh, spin by the Olympiakos car, relatively yep. harmless. It's just done a, a 360 and it sh should have carried on. Yeah, he's away, Casper Anderson. Yeah, young yeah, Danish driver. Are there more cars coming into the picture? Just saw Ryan Dio with the Rangers car coming in. There's uh, Duncan Tappy in the uh, Spurs car. He's uh, one lap down at the moment. 
but looking very good for uh, RSC and Elect. Oh, and Flamengo turns round from uh, fourth place. And very took a, took a rocker. That's the first corner again. We're seeing a lot. Of, but look how much water there is there. So he's on a wide line. You can see all the water coming up off the tyres and the bodywork. It just looks like it aquaplaned into a very slow, harmless spin. Harmless apart from time loss, of course. And then he uh, turns it around on the power yeah. in front of someone. So the order at the front is the same. Anderlecht, Dortmund, Madrid, one, two, three. They've all yet to stop. We're about halfway through this uh, race. And a uh, tremendous job by these young men out the front of the field. And uh, there's the Anderlecht car. And uh, that is uh, Craig Dolby, who is leading... And uh, there is your top ten positions with the Andalek car in front. The Dortmund car second and then uh, Atletico Madrid. But uh, just seen that uh, the Andalek car put in its fastest lap thus far. In fact, the fastest lap of the race. I think it is. It's 38.5. We're on board so, there. Just running wide a little bit. We'll look at all the road on the track. Bear in mind these cars have yet to do their pit stop. The leading car that has stopped is the Liverpool car, currently in eighth place. Uh, he's already stopped, so when yeah. the first seven stop, the order is going to rejig. And it looks as if he lost about uh, 25 seconds or so in that pit on stop. The pit stop, yeah. yeah. Well, they only actually be stopped at their pit box for uh, four or five seconds, but to obviously have to slow to come in and then accelerate out again, so about 25 seconds for that pit stop. I don't know. So, uh, Anderlecht rounds the third corner, that's where he spun in qualifying, almost dropped it on the second and, lap of the race as well. And now the gap is shown on our time stream as 2.8 seconds, although it also looks a little bit tighter than that, and now second place coming under challenge. Madrid car in third, pushing hard, he's found some speed since the start of the race. Yeah, Andy Suchek, he was under investigation, but presumably the stewards have decided that uh, he hadn't uh, committed a dip misdemeanour. We haven't so seen any continues on his way, and uh, well, Paul Meyer very slow through there, just trying to get the power down. Yeah, he's starting to struggle a bit. The car's uh, weaving a bit, wheel spinning a bit, and Suchek's been one of the pace setters in the Madrid car this season, so he'll be looking to go forward. Andy Suchek, uh, former Spanish Formula 3 champion, and... Uh, Half Austrian, in fact. He's got dual nationality, this boy. Maya got very deep into that corner. We saw him go around the outside, which normally in the wet is not that bad, but Suchek is definitely looking to get past here. See how he keeps pulling out. He's not, Although he's not overtaking, he pulls out just to try and distract the driver, yeah. bobbing about in his mirrors. There is uh, Duncan Tappy in the Tottenham Hotspur car. And uh, he is running down in uh, 15th place, having had that uh, front wheel puncture early on and making that pit stop. So, uh, very disappointing for Duncan Tapp. He's a very talented young driver. Now, we haven't so. seen any cars pit for three or four laps. No. We're on lap 12, so they've got eight laps. Here's Liverpool uh, FC, and currently in uh, fifth place, the number 21 car with Adrian Vallis saw his football skills at the start of the programme. He's already stopped, remember, so he's yeah. in a relatively strong position, as is the Roma car, which is the next car behind him. And it, we've got the first three haven't stopped, and then I think uh, Seville has not stopped either. But uh, all the rest of the 18 have stopped. And Liverpool FC just putting in a, a quick lap time at 38.7. Here we are on board with Liverpool, and uh, look at the car weaving and wobbling. There's a lot of water down there, but uh, he's got his eye in, he's pitted, he's got his fresh tyres on, so yeah. uh, and uh, set quite a good lap time last time through. 38.7, in fact, it's the only guy in the 38s on the previous lap, so yeah. uh, this is the, uh, the one to watch. Roma is following him in fifth place, and the gap between those two is seven seconds, so... Uh, Liverpool is the one, the form guy on this lap. AS uh, Roda, Enrico Toccicello, you picked him out as a possible uh, star of this race. There is uh, all the splits, uh, and the first six now separated by almost a minute, but of course some of those, fourth, fifth and sixth, have all made uh, pit stops, right, including yeah. Liverpool Football Club. And somebody's come in, it's the leader. 
I think I've just seen the Anderlecht car in the pits making his stop. So, interesting to see how quickly uh, Dolby gets in and out. Didn't actually see the pit stop, but uh, I'm sure he's back on the uh, track by now. So, we have, just for a moment, a, a new leader. There uh, is the Basel car, young uh, Max Wissel been racing in Formula BMW and now in Formula Renault. There's the uh, Roma car going through, and here is Porto. There is Basel. Running in sixth, the young lad, the 18-year-old lad, started halfway down the field, but uh, he's doing a good job in these really difficult conditions. Followed by Porto. So we've just got the two cars to pit yet. see where Anderlecht uh, came back in, but uh, we would think he would be in, probably in third place at the moment. We'll see that next time round. Fastest lap again for Liverpool on the previous lap, a 38 for over a second, almost a second faster than everybody else. So oh. Liverpool's the, the quick car at the minute, there's the fifth place Roma car. Here is the uh, Liverpool car. Fastest lap, 138.452. And uh, certainly has got his eye in, as you said. That car looks a lot more stable than uh, the other ones we've been looking at, yeah. powering out of the slow corners. He's obviously got a nice set of hands. Second place, Madrid has pitted. So we just... Uh, Borussia Dortmund, with uh, young Paul Meyer, is still out there. And he continues to lead at the moment. But the uh, Liverpool car certainly on the charge, that very quick lap, taking uh, two seconds uh, out of the Anderlecht car. The Anderlecht car in third place, having made his pit stop. And uh, he is uh, maybe just getting used to that new set of tyres. It's Craig Dolby. There is uh, the current lineup. remember? No, he's the, been uh, taken. Liverpool's third. Anderlecht, they've just gone past our position. Liverpool third with another fastest lap. And Anderlecht, Craig Dolby's dropped to fourth. So, Dolby having led from the beginning, now under a bit of pressure, maybe doesn't like his second set of tyres so much. This car still in the lead, of course, at the moment, yet to stop, and it must do that pretty soon now. We are on uh, lap number 14, so he's still got six laps, and uh, Piers is on a completely different strategy to everybody else. The first two cars in this race still yet to stop, and... He isn't quick enough. He's, his previous lap, Dortmund, was three seconds slower than the Liverpool car in third, who has stopped. And uh, he's yet to stop, as is the second place Madrid, yet to stop. Well, I'll be interested to see if Dolby, when he gets those tyres uh, fully up to temperature, can uh, come back at uh, Liverpool FC. Here is the Liverpool car. That's the car which is on fire at the moment on this uh, wet day here in Belgium at the uh, Zolder Track former Grand Prix circuit. It's looking very stable, that car. He's it is. putting the power down well. You've not seen it snaking so much as the others. So, uh, at the end of this lap, he's in the final corner now. We'll, we'll take a look at the lap times. He was quickest last time round, but the one to watch is the Anderlecht car behind him, Dolby, and see if he can match his performance. Yeah, now the he's 40.8 on... for the Liverpool car. I think Valley's pitted at exactly the right time. I'm not sure it's the right decision to stay out. Look at that standing water there, and that can so easily catch you out. Dolby stayed with him. The gap is yeah. still four seconds, and uh, they're both within the same second on lap time. But fastest man last time through was Borussia Dortmund, the leader. Bear in mind, he's still to stop. So the real interest here is where the Borussia Dortmund car comes back in after the pits. And I've lost from the board, I've lost the Madrid car. Is he in the pits or has he spun? He was, he was in second place last time through. And he's gone missing. Yeah. So we'll see what happens to that to Madrid car. There is the Andalek car, and currently shown in third place here. Craig Dolby, the purple and white car. And it's still twitching a little bit through that slow chicane. And let's see what Dolby can do now about closing back on uh, Liverpool FC in the hands of uh, Adrian Vallis. 
that car to me is not working as well as the Liverpool car in these conditions. But we'll see, he was, he was in touch on the last lap, we need to keep an eye on the lap times. I'm still interested to see what's happened to the Madrid car. Well, take a little time to cycle down our uh, timing screen here. We're uh, up in the top of the big grandstand. We've had a lot of fans in front of us here at uh, Isolde. Track with a lot of history and uh, a track which is used uh, on many occasions through the years. They have a 24-hour race here. And you can see this spray, absolutely foul conditions. And just the uh, car's almost disappearing in the uh, mist there. What about those lap times uh, now? With, uh, yeah, Liverpool FC, that lap just took... Uh, a two, only two yeah, tenths, two tenths of a second, so Dolby seems to be getting back into the swing of things and the Corinthian car goes through our uh, picture. Here is the uh, Corinthian car, Antonio Pizzonia. Man with uh, lots of Grand Prix experience, a lot of success in Britain on the Formula 3 Championship, as you did, of course, uh, Kelvin. He did, yeah. He was a bit of a star earlier in his career. Maybe lost his way a little bit just recently, but he's a talented driver. A little bit inconsistent, but yeah. on his day, very, very quick. And we've still got the Dortmund car leading. He hasn't stopped. He's, got, he's got three laps in which to stop, and uh, he will drop down the order, which will leave Liverpool leading under Lex second, Madrid third. Battle there for 10th and 11th place between Corinthians and Galatasaray. I'm not sure if those two uh, football teams have ever played each other. <laughs> that Galatasaray stadium is unbelievable. I was there oh, about a month ago when there was a game on, and it, afterwards they won it. And they parted all night to get me awake. Yeah, just out of my hotel, it was just a couple of hundred yards away from the uh, stadium. Good battles here. Somebody just going wide, I think. Didn't quite catch it. No, they got it uh, all back together again. But there is the car from Turkey, and we've seen, as we said, some Galatasaray fans here chanting for us in the paddock. They were enjoying themselves despite the wet weather. And uh, he's been passed by Olympiakos, and he's down the inside. Nice clean move from Olympiakos from Greece. That's in the hairpin at the end of the lap, and the Galatasaray car is the stopper in the bottle here. He's holding these three on, so uh, let's see if they can, the others can pick him off one by one. Top so, three is the same, and through the gravel, he's going to get through there if he keeps his foot down. down he does. So that was good, yeah. But he's been struggling also for Mango. Yeah, uh, took a rocker, he's been off a couple of times, actually. You can see look that. Look at that. Yep. He got his rear wheel on the white line as he braked, and the white line is painted, so that's how he lost the back end of the car. And uh, Shortcut through the gravel, didn't lose him much, but he lost the position that he'd just taken on the previous corner, of course. See it in slow motion. Fortunately, didn't uh, damage any of the aerodynamics. And, and there the leader, the leader is in. The leader is in the pits. And uh, just uh, two laps left as we see the pit stop here. There they are. Four men going to work with the wheel guns. They practice this back at base. And a bit of a problem with the right rear there. And uh, this pit stop is taking a long time. This is losing in the lead. He can't go. He's got no drive or gears. He's, you can see the driver waving. Well, did he get it in gear? Oh, my. I've just probably never even practiced this. Finally gets it. He's the right gear. Now he goes. And you yeah. see, a, there's a the telemetry as well. It's the first time we've seen that. We lost some time there. Yeah. So, when he rejoins, we're going to have Liverpool leading. And elect second. Dolby, and, the Dolby has started to close up on Liverpool now. Yeah. So Dolby has got his eye back in and uh, took uh, well, 0.4 of a second. Uh, so this is the real battle now for the lead. Liverpool versus Anderlecht. So we'll be interested to see where they lie in the, their respective positions. And, uh, That's the oh, Roma car. Roma car, and that isn't coming out of there. No, and that stopped. is a dangerous spot, Kelvin. Yeah. I think we might have another safety car unless they've got some sort of snack squad so to pull it out of there. He's, he's dropped that off out of fifth place. Enrico Toccagello, experienced driver, and it's not in a good place, that car. So we may see... You can see how dangerous yeah. it is. You can see the other cars coming through, Snakey, and someone else off in the background. 
Uh, These conditions are so oh. difficult that... Did now he just he, lose downforce there? I think he was... The Flamengo car had spun previous lap, remember? Yeah. That's Galatasaray, Galatasaray are off yeah. as well. So, uh, it's all happening. Safety yeah. car again. We've got two cars to tidy up. There's your leader, Liverpool. And uh, what this does, it will close. The second place, Craig Dolby, will close completely up on the leader, Liverpool. Now, they've got nine minutes to clear it up. It might, it might be uh, a dash just a final the end, dash yeah. for cash, as they call it in the States. Yeah. They've got two cars to shift and nine minutes to the end of the race, so I so the marshals can act swiftly. And uh, coming up in third, there is Borussia Dortmund. Well, after his pit stop, so that's that's helped him also. Despite all, all the rain, we've had an absolutely cracking race, haven't we? So good work by Liverpool, Adrian Vallas, but he's lost all of that advantage he had, yeah. and uh, we've got the three form cars one, two, three and in the charge to the finish. We've lost. Roma, who I tipped before the race, there he is in the gravel. I want you to be moved very quickly. Uh, he trudges off, turns round, has a look. Right, nice to see the numbers on the back of the driver suits. Just like uh, football, of course, the numbers on the back. Yellow flags uh, all waving. And uh, there we see the uh, drop down the traffic of the first. Ten places. Got the Brazilian teams in ninth and tenth, so there'll be a bit of a uh, war there between the, the team from Sao Paulo and the team from Rio. And uh, a lot of needle back in Brazil between those two teams, I can tell you. Indeed, between the people from uh, Sao Paulo, Palestinas, and then the uh, people from uh, Rio. So it won't take long for these. Uh, they're pretty much all caught the safety car now. The Roma car should be out of the way already. Uh, what we haven't we haven't yet seen the Galatasaray car being dug out, but uh, I think the Roma car will be moved already. Dolby, remember Nurburgring, second in the first race and then second from the back of the grid in uh, the second of the two races. There is he going to make it three seconds in a row? Can he do something better? He's got to keep his head, hasn't he? Because he's yeah. got to start thinking about the championship. It isn't a drivers' championship as such here, but. The uh, championship is for the uh, football teams, but still a lot of kudos for the driver who scores the most points. Of course, and uh, the young guy is trying to make an A. Yeah, it will be difficult for him not to go for the win. Uh, well, nothing wrong with the second place; is relatively inexperienced. But we're let's hope we can see a good fight to the flag. But I fancy the Liverpool cars. It's looked very stable and quick. The safety cars going around once more. Dolby uh, will certainly make the headlines in the uh, magazines and in the uh, websites tomorrow, and an uh, excellent website for uh, Super League if you uh, get a chance to look at it. Gives you lots of information. And uh, some uh, team managers back in the UK will be saying, who is this Craig Dolby? I haven't really heard of him. And uh, why is he so quick? Well, he's quick because he's got a lot of talent. He's honed his skills out here in Belgium more than anything. And um, he's been a bit hidden away because this Belgian series that he's raced in a lot does not get reported hardly right. in the UK. No, it doesn't. But there's no question about Craig Dolby. Everybody will have heard of him after this week. And they had really after the Nürburgring, but uh, also, of course, this championship gathering momentum, this form of uh, Super League uh, former also gathering momentum. Uh, you know, any time you have a new series like this, there's a lot of sceptics out there. Many people say it will never happen. But it has happened, it's yeah. happened in a spectacular fashion with 18 actually great race cars. We say 18 race cars, but I understand even before this six race season, uh, because this is a, a wind, a, an autumn season, there are more cars to come, there could be two or three more cars. They have built more cars, right. so uh, that should be good. We just saw the Roma car being moved. I saw in the background Galatasaray car was on the move already, so let's hope the car can go in at the end of this lap, the safety car. We've got five minutes left. Three laps, roughly, by my calculation, maybe four. So let's hope we can go racing at the end of laps. This laps. Lights are still on. Yeah, this race, of course, is a time race, plus the one lap. So yes. we know pretty well how long it's going to last in time, which always is a good way to do it, because it means that the schedule um, can be uh, very clearly defined. So all these guys going around, what are they thinking? They're taking a little breather as well. I mean, it's physical to drive these cars. Not so physical in the wet, though. No, it's much less in the wet, because the, the G-force and the speed is lower, and the lights are still on the safety car, so are they going around again? Looks like it. The rain's dropped off a bit, so that's good. That bodes well for the sprint. So yeah. Just there's another puddle, isn't there? That one yeah. was one that could catch you out. Yeah, the thing is, that's 
on the inside for this corner in front of us in the front of the picture so you'll want to be going down the inside there if you want to pass someone but of course that makes you breaking twice as hard lights are still on so i think he's going around again yeah he's going one more lap interesting uh, location for this track because uh, behind us just behind the main grandstand here is, a, is a, an upmarket executive housing estate all these houses have been coming to this circuit for uh, 30 years or so uh, I, I think the track was there before the houses actually so they can't complain too much uh -huh. if they're going to complain they complain about these cars because yeah. they are so noisy last year they had the champ cars and they weren't nearly as noisy as this. They're just passing our commentary position yeah, we as hardly you talk, hear Andrew, and uh, I don't know if the viewers can hear it, but the, we can't hear very much at all when yeah. we go past us here. Uh, next to us here in the uh, commentary uh, box, we've got the uh, Spanish team. They're doing their commentary. And we've got one of the most famous rally co-drivers of all time, Luis Moya, who uh, co-drove for Carlos Sainz. He's doing their commentary. I don't know what a rally co-driver know about racing, except that I'm an old rally co-driver as well. So. Well, there you go. It's his conditions at the minute. He yeah. probably knows more than we do. So there is 7 through 12, and then we see 13 through 18. And uh, Rom, of course, means Rome, and Gal, Galatasaray, and Sev for Seville, and Beige for Beijing. Now, the Beijing car's right down there. He's not going to get any points. No. And I think at the end of this race, and we only got three minutes left, but with the lights out, that uh, we should see a championship lead. Yeah, change. Yeah, so... Three minutes to go, that will be two laps. Here's the yeah. football There's players the in the pit. team, they'd be pretty excited. And uh, I think we've uh, down there, I think the uh, captain of the team, uh, Bart Gore, I think the goalkeeper, uh, Daniel uh, Zitka from uh, Czech Republic's there. And they're, uh, they're getting pretty excited. So we've got a three-lap sprint to the end. We've got two laps under the time, plus one lap. So... Uh, Liverpool FC, Adrian Vales needs to uh, keep his head at the end of this race and uh, he's going to be defending from Craig Dolby in the Anderlecht car, who's now, been quick all weekend. It's going to be two laps, we think. On, oh, well, I'm going well, by the, the clock. Time, is it? Yeah, yeah, I just want plus well, one. So plus one, yeah. I think it'll be three laps. Three laps. If, if they can cross the line before one minute 40, that's my calculation. <laughs> Well, it really is going to be an absolutely storming finish here. And so easy to make a mistake under this pressure. Yeah, yeah, they all want to put the power down. They've, they've got a lot of power under their right foot and uh, they want to be accelerating hard. It's one minute 40 is gone now, so it may be this lap plus one more. That will be the end of the race. And Valles accelerates out of the last corner and there's a gap already to the second. Yeah, he's got the jump. He's certainly got the jump there. Let's see what Goldie does down into the first corner because he's very quick into that one. And there he is, and he's going to be uh, in the spray. And now let's see what the talent of this young man is. Adrian Vallis, he's, a, he's a, the known force is Adrian Vallis. A lot of success in uh, GP2 racing. But uh, for Dolby driving a car like this, we know he's quick in the wet. We saw that at the Nürburgring. But let's see if this guy is a champion of the future. And he's, he's, he's already closed up a yeah, little bit. He has. Valles did a great restart, caught Dolby napping a bit, and also the Borussia car wasn't awake either at the end of the lap, no. but he's closed up as well, so uh, with this lap plus one more, and is someone going to make a desperate lunge? Atletico Madrid in the fourth place, FC Basel in fifth, Porto in sixth. But uh, Alex is uh, looking good. Uh, but he's a bit, I felt he's a bit slow out of there, but there's not yeah. much traction in that corner, is it? Lost the traction, yeah. But uh, he's pushing it hard. And uh, Meyer is definitely hanging on in third place, no question down about that. But Liverpool FC, they've won so much in football, are they going to win here in the Super League formula? They, uh, well, nobody's really pulled away at the moment. Meyer's lost a bit there on the head, but going to go wide again. Yeah, yeah. Ballas looks good. And... Uh, Dolby and Anderlecht is close now. They've got one more lap. The clock stops, so it's 45 minutes plus one lap. So this is the last lap of the race. And you have to say it's looking good for Ballas. I don't know what uh, Greg Dolby can do uh, from back here. Go on to the last lap of this uh, absolutely stupendous motor race here in Zolder. And anybody had any doubts about Super League Formula, forget it. This is brilliant racing here.
1.4 the gap. So Vallis Salot. looks a lot. Yeah, he looks good. He's actually pulled out a bit on this lap, and that car did look good in the previous session before the, the last safety car. Remember that uh, the group for the second race will be formed up with the guy who is last, and that'll be AC Milan and uh, Beijing. They'll be on the front row of the group by the look of things. And uh, is Golby taking any inches out of him? It is, we're talking about inches here. We're talking about fractions of a second. See Golby's car, both the second yeah. and third car losing traction out there. And Valley's got his power down really well out of that last chicane. Has Golby decided just to play safe and go for second place? He isn't that close behind. He's not really putting the pressure now on uh, this uh, lead car of Adrian Valley's representing Liverpool Football Club. Okay, there's well. the gap. Third and fourth. Just one more corner for Liverpool. And puts the power down nicely out of there. And elected second, the long-time leader, Dolby, and Borussia Dortmund in third, Paul Meyer. Final corner. Final corner, and here they come towards the waiting chequered flag and it twitches as it comes down and takes the chequered flag now and he has got a victory here for Liverpool FC and their Spanish driver Adrian Vallis. Magnificent result too though for the two youngsters, the two young drivers with uh, a third successive second place for Craig Dolby down in the pits there celebrating and in uh, third place Paul Meyer a late stand-in for uh, Borussia Dortmund finishes in uh, that third spot. He'll be up on the podium. And uh, still the rest of the field coming through with uh, FC Basel, Atletico Madrid and FC Porto. And they'll be in the points. They're, they're on the slowing down lap and they'll be glad this one is over and they're going to hope that these clouds lift a little bit. There is uh, Anderlecht there, who's dropped back, uh, but did indeed finish in uh, second place. Dolby waving to the crowd. Young man with a lot of personality, and uh, definitely we're seeing a star made in this uh, Super League formula. Great job those two young lads did. Uh, front row between them, and they both finished. We, we, we saw people, yeah, we saw people like Robert Dornbos throwing yeah, off. Yeah, Toccicello the same. Guys with Formula One experience, chuck it into the gravel. He's a young man, nobody's told him yet, it's difficult. <laughs> Great job, and uh, amazing to see uh, Maya there, with, still with his dark tinted sun visor on. Yeah. Like, Christ knows how he could see anything, but he's <laughs> maybe, up, he, maybe that's the secret of his success. Purpose, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we confirm the, the result again. First car number 21, Liverpool FC. Second place, car number eight. RSC Anderlecht from uh, Belgium here. Lots of support for Anderlecht though from all around the country. Car in third place is uh, Borussia Dortmund. Fourth for FC Basel, fifth Atletico Madrid and sixth FC Porto. Then it was the PSV Eindhoven. Came up from the back of the grid to seventh place. And then a good job by Ryan Diel. Didn't see much of him in the Rangers car. And then uh, the Brazilian, the inter-Brazilian battle, Flamengo beat uh, Corinthians for 9th and 10th. Alain, they moved up to 11th, and then uh, Tottenham Hotspur, uh, Duncan Tappy, and then the rest of the cars uh, were sidelined before the end of the race. Race length, 45 minutes, 51.628 seconds for the record. The winning margin, 2.25 seconds. Excellent stuff. So, Zolder again served us up a good race. Cars are coming round now to uh, collect the plaudits for the first three. They'll be up on that uh, podium, spraying that bubbly, always a great moment for any racing driver. And then we understand they might have some footballs they're going to kick into the crowd. And uh, let's just see that uh, finish again. There's a gap, and there is the victory by uh, Adrian Valles. Liverpool team, his Liverpool team on the uh, pit wall, very happy with that result and uh, it's a great job by them. Came into this race in seventh in the championship so that has helped them greatly. The championship leader Beijing went out at the first corner and Sevilla also third place in the points, didn't finish. 
And uh, look at the celebration there. 22-year-old driver from Alicante in uh, Spain. Very strong uh, career in karting. This season has been racing in the GP2 series and not had a lot of success, actually, driving uh, for a couple of teams. But this has definitely put him back on the map, this uh, win here. Was a test driver for the Spiker team in 2007. And, uh, well, you can see the joy in his face. And uh, there's the uh, PR man for the uh, series, Paul Ryan, getting involved in the uh, trophy presentations. Man behind this, Alex Andrew, the bloke who's put all this together, is going to be absolutely delighted. And, of course, Robin Webb, who's the competition's director, they've worked so hard in the background to make this happen. There he is, up on the podium. Congratulations, you were really pushing hard on that race, despite the conditions. Yeah, it was fantastic. The car was really good. I'm really happy now for the team because we could have done this earlier, but it's OK. Uh, now we know that we can win races. It's very good for the team, for me, for Liverpool, for everyone, for the fans. So I hope that we can keep pushing and win this championship. You looked like you had a very good setup for the car. Yeah, the car was fantastic. The strategy was really good. After the pit stop, I had to push really hard to make a gap, and that's it. And uh, we went out from the under like uh, seven seconds. So that's really good. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, and there is Dolby coming up. And uh, Dolby with a flag from uh, Anderlecht. So let's hear now from Craig Dolby down in the pit lane. Craig, podium again, making a habit of this. Yeah, three races in a row, what can I say? It's, it's fantastic for the RSC Andalek car. That's our home race, the crowd are fantastic. The team are here to support me and uh, we delivered, you know. We're winning the race for a long time. Just a bit of a problem in a pit stop, but we'll work hard and improve on that. And uh, hopefully we'll be on the top step soon. But three seconds in a row is, is good for the championship and the team. Congratulations. Thank you. Just mentioned there a bit of a problem with the uh, pit stop. We didn't actually see what happened there, but obviously they're a bit slow changing the wheels. He did a great job, young lad, and uh, making a name for himself. Here's another look at the start. Replay of the start. Remember, there was an impact at the back. Watching the rear, the green car. Yep. That's the championship leader, Beijing, Rigon, and uh, the AC Milan car, Dornbos, with no front wing. So I suspect Dornbos went into the back of uh, Rigon. I, yep. didn't, I didn't see it, but I'm guessing. The Sevilla off of uh, yep. Borgo Garcia. That caused the safety car. That caused the first safety car. <laughs> a bit later on, this was a relatively harmless one. He powered it back round again and got going. And then Dolby in the middle of the race uh, was setting the fastest time. And then Olympiacos, another harmless spin, and uh, he turned round. But the turning point, I suppose, was the pit stops and Liverpool FC gaining the advantage then. They timed it really well. Yep. As I suggested, they went off the back of the safety car straight into the pits before the leaders had got up to speed, so they gained some time. That was the uh, cut through the gravel of the Flamengo. Bit of rally crossing going on. Galatasaray there, out of control. He retired with that one. He didn't get, didn't get back out of the gravel. And uh, this was the restart towards the end of the race. And the then line. the chequered flag, and right. then Dolby behind him, and then Paul Meyer, he'd done an absolutely tremendous job as well. And uh, just a quick shot of him there celebrating. But uh, Adrian Vallis will know that this put, has put his career on track after what's been a horrible season for him, actually, in GP2. Some Mandelic fans there. Here's the championship standings now, and, uh, well, I'm a bit surprised Beijing stay in front, wow. but by just four points, PSV Eindhoven and uh, Andelec. So just uh, look at the gap there, very little between uh, the first three, only five points in Liverpool FC in fourth, Porto, Seville, Roma, Basel, Rangers and uh, Tottenham, the Scottish and uh, English teams there in ninth and tenth places. But uh, it's very close at the top. Galatasaray with a straight hundred, Corinthians, Dortmund there, getting quite a few extra points. Obviously, a new driver here, but uh, all the points count, whoever the driver is. Milan, uh, Alain is in uh, 16th from Libyakos. And uh, Madrid there at the bottom of the pile. They'll try and do something about that in this uh, race, which is coming up in a couple of hours' time.
there the Anderlecht scarves proudly held above and uh, those fans that love him there here is the uh, trophy and a magnificent trophy and uh, that will need a bit of polishing you keep all your trophies uh, <laughs> yeah. Kelvin most of them yeah a lot I've, I've won a lot of races where you don't get any trophies no. awarded which all the is, team uh, managers which sides. You a bit yeah, yeah you always have a, t a tug of war with the team manager when it's a nice big one like that one in the middle but yeah uh, yeah I've got a fair few of course, Nicky Lauder used to give them away to his local car wash, he said. That's and here right. he is. Oh, doesn't know quite which way to go. Well, there's only one way, and that's up. And there the uh, presentation party going forward. <laughs> and, uh, there Paul Meyer in the uh, yellow. He's already got the football yeah, shirt good on. See the, good to see the football shirts. I mean, they, should, they should make them all wear those. Yeah. That's good, yeah. It's a nice touch. And there he is in third place. The uh, super sub there for uh, Dortmund. First time in the car, I remember, just arrived here yesterday. And, uh, Second place, right Craig Dolby, he knows how to celebrate, he's happy with that. Yeah, jumps in here. Schumacher style, he's, he's been watching the telly. And uh, that is it. <laughs> Great job by all three of these yeah. guys. Excellent job. Morning conditions, hard work, a lot of concentration. We've got another race to do yet, of course. And uh, we can see who presents the uh, trophies. So we're waiting for these trophies to be handed out. It's the national anthem, please. happy with that. A little bit cold here at Zolder. It was a nice day yesterday, a lovely autumn day here. The leaves are just starting to turn. And here is uh, a trophy being presented by the uh, president of uh, Anderlecht, Boston, van der Stock. And uh, Alex Andrew right alongside him, the man who's uh, made this all happen. He used to be the boss of Coca-Cola in uh, the Iberian Peninsula for a while. Uh, yeah, he's one of the main and, uh, movers that's... behind this idea, and uh, so far, so good. Yep. So that third place gets his trophy. Great <laughs> uh, Is that a kiss or just a whisper? <laughs> and he holds the trophy aloft and the flag, and uh, plenty of cheering from the crowd. The scarf's coming in useful in the cold here, and now the man who's uh, won it. Adrian Valles. He gets the pat on the back and uh, congratulations. And he holds the trophy up high as well. And Adrian Valles cannot celebrate really because they've got another race coming up. We're going yeah. to see that uh, live as well. But what that race has done is made the top four in the championship positions very close. So. Uh, They've got uh, a lot to play for in the second race. Still wet here at Zolder. Rain has stopped again, so it'll be interesting to see the uh, conditions later, but champagne sprayed on the podium. There. And uh, we will be back, of course. This is how they'll line up the reverse grid with Dawn Boss. He'll be a man to watch, and uh, Davide Rigor, obviously quick, Garcia and Casper Anderson. Then we didn't see much of Alessandro Pierre Guidi in the Galatasaray car, apart from through the gravel. Toccicello, he'll be a man to watch from that sixth place. Again, yeah. Duncan Tappy and uh, Bertrand Baguette. And then uh, Pizzodia, let's see how he gets on. Two Brazilians lining up together there on uh, that row of the grid. And then Ryan Diel and Yama Berman, who's been a winner at Donington. He could go well for Eindhoven, lots of fans here. Dom ND had a quiet race for Porto and Andy Suchek. May see some fire, but from the younger 18 year old Max Vassell lines up with uh, Paul Meyer, then the two we've just seen taking first and second place. Craig Dolby and Adrian Valles, and Dolby, remember, at the Nurberg Ring came from the back to second place. So, all that to come in a later programme, just a little later today. So, let's uh, just check out the uh, final scenes here. And. Uh, we will uh, see 
what's coming up later. There will be at midday GMT. So uh, adjust your watches and uh, that will be the second race. That should be a cracker as well. Well, uh, we've certainly enjoyed it here, Kelvin. Good race, another one coming up. Uh, join us then, but for now, I'm Andrew Marriott for Kelvin Burt and goodbye. Thank you.